As some of you may know, I've been having a little back and forth with King Crocoduck over the issue of science being a social construct, which I assert and many other people assert that it is, and he disagrees. I had offered him a debate in order to have a chance to talk this out and offer alternative worldviews, but as you can see, he turned me down. Given that, I thought I would sort of create a debate, giving you two different perspectives. Uh, the first one being a scientist who is working in his field, and then the second one is King Crocoduck's answer as to why it's not a social construct. Enjoy. Is gravity a social construct? Gravity is very real. I feel it on my morning run as I slog up the hill towards my house. A scientist I know likes to say, if you don't believe in gravity, feel free to put your belief to the test by stepping out of my office one day. No one seriously doubts that a fall from a sixth floor office window is going to end badly. And because any reasonable person would agree, it makes sense to call this an objective fact. So the effects of gravity are something that reasonable people will agree on. But what causes these effects? This is where the debate between scientists and philosophers gets going. Gravity and the science we use to explain gravity are not the same. The surprising thing is that scientists are pretty sure the scientific theory of gravity is wrong. Einstein's theory of general relativity assumes that space and time are infinitely divisible into smaller and smaller pieces. But experiments have shown that eventually it becomes impossible to make a ruler with a finer grid, or a stopwatch that measures smaller and smaller instants of time. Einstein's theory can't deal with this. It doesn't work on very small scales. The assumptions Einstein made are wrong. We've been at this sort of crossroads before. Isaac Newton's theory of gravity, developed 400 years ago, said that gravity was an attractive force between objects that have mass. Einstein made his breakthrough by wondering whether gravity wasn't a force after all. It is still useful to think of gravity as a force, particularly if you're considering stepping outside your office window, but thinking of gravity as a force is a construct, a useful construct, but one we know does not truly describe our world. Thomas Kuhn, a 20th century philosopher of science, famously described the transition from one theory to the next as a paradigm shift. Kuhn argued that science changes paradigms when scientists develop a theory that successfully describes more of the world than their current theory. So can we just choose any old theory we like? The particular theory that a scientist decides to work with relies on their judgement, but, and this is crucial, they have to defend their judgement to other scientists. Other scientists will compare it to experimental evidence. They will test the logic to see if it is self-consistent. They will question whether the theory used is fit for purpose. Do you need to know the speed at which the egg will hit the ground? Or do you need to measure the stretching of space a thousand times smaller than an atomic nucleus? Science, while it relies on individual judgments, is a social process by which those judgments have to be defended to other scientists. Science works best when ideas are tested by empirical evidence put together from a variety of individual viewpoints. Most scientists would say that general relativity is closer to a true description of gravity than Newton's theory. But most scientists who want to improve on general relativity discard it at the outset. Only a hardy few try to build on it. The way that scientists think of gravity today depends on who they are and the experiences that have shaped them. This is an uncomfortable idea for scientists. But if all theories are wrong, as us scientists like to say, it is a feeling we must get used to. So next time you meet a scientist at a party, tell them, gravity is a social construct. By its end, we will conclude that science is, at its core, in fact a natural process and not a social one. And the paradigm that we will be applying to arrive at this result is what I have called the naturalist nuke. According to the political scientist, Christy Winters, the standards for what constitutes science are the normative products of authoritative consensus and social negotiation, and so science is, in her words, absolutely a social construct. Indeed, she and others like her will no doubt look upon the Big Four as just another expression of socially constructed normative values. But look deeper. 
I submit to the viewer that the difference between the models generated every day by the average Joe and the models generated by scientists is fundamentally a matter of degree and not of typology. Contrary to common belief, there is actually no such thing as the scientific method. There is no special recipe or checklist that one adheres to in order to do science. There are only the criteria stipulated by the Big Four, and even these are ultimately just idealizations. So what then? Does this mean that everyone is a scientist? Well, in a very broad sense, yes. We are all engaged in the business of generating models that organize our sense data, and we all draw inferential relations between each datum with the aim of improving our ability to navigate the world. Whether that navigation involves the literal act of ascertaining one's own position and following some route, or the more general activities associated with functioning in the world and exercising decision-making power with tangible consequences, both the specialist and the layperson seem to be engaged in fundamentally the same activity. Science is not an invention of society. Science is an evolved cognitive process. According to the contents of our best empirical theories, the electrochemical processes that are intrinsic to all living organisms serve as the biophysical substrates for the receipt, storage, processing, and response to information about the external environment. Simply put, all living organisms detect environmental stimuli and respond accordingly, and these activities are fundamentally mediated by biophysical processes. What I am claiming is that these properties, these big four operational criteria, were not invented by anyone. They are adaptations that constrain the types of cognitive processes that are used by all organisms to model their external environment. The reason why we value the big four when generating our models is not because we were socialized to do so, but because natural selection made us value them. We could not have survived otherwise. The social constructionists have situated science within discourses and institutions. In short, they understand science as having issued from particular social histories. But I played the Uno reverse card against them. I situated science, as well as all the various social histories of the world, within a common natural history that is governed by pragmatic demands which do not issue from any particular culture or history. Yes, axiology informs my methodology. But my axiology, insofar as the normative values that govern the criteria for what constitutes good science are concerned, is also naturalized. I haven't derived aught from is, but I have shown how the values which underpin good scientific practice don't issue from any particular society, and how the activity of developing and testing models is itself a product of natural history. Because this activity was not invented by any society then, but rather is a product of evolutionary history, science, at its core, is not a social construct. This is the naturalist nuke. I have a lot of things to say in response to this, but I want to focus on one and keep this video short. I want to provide you with a definition of a social construct. According to lexico.com, a social construct is a concept or perception of something based on the collective views developed and maintained within a society or social group, a social phenomenon or convention originating within or cultivated by societies or a particular group, as opposed to existing inherently or naturally. Science is definitely a concept that is based in the collective views and is maintained within a society or a social group. Everything that he's done has tried to base things within the individual. He's left out the society. His naturalistic nuke doesn't actually address the fundamental issue of science being a process of knowledge production. You have to communicate between people. So even an individual in his model, once they try to pass that information on to a wider group and get it accepted, they're socially constructing their knowledge. I don't see how you can avoid that conclusion. Thanks for watching.